Okay. Uh, good morning to you all. Welcome you all for a new uh, free session, ERPM, right? So I think uh, some of you may be knowing about myself. I'm Dr. Vasanth Kuvanti Silva. Uh, I'm one of the ERPM teacher and uh, I'm a uh, VOG. At the moment, I'm working in uh, base hospital, Tamuk Tegal, right? Okay. So uh, from today onwards, we'll be conducting till your exam, till your theory exam starts, we'll be conducting some uh, free sessions like this. Okay. I think that will uh, really will be helpful for your upcoming exam. Okay. Some of you may be taking the exam for the first time. And some of you may be taking the exam for the second, third times, right? So whatever it is, right? This, these sessions will mainly cover your ERPM theory exam. And also, if some uh, local students are joining, this will be important for your common MCQ as well. <clears throat> okay. So as an initiation, I'll be doing some MCQs, about 25 MCQs today. And we will, when we go on, we will discuss SPS as well, MCQs and SPS. Okay, so uh, hopefully your exam will be in about uh, two months time. So till then we'll have some time to do these uh, free sessions. And also those who want to join with uh, the proper theory and uh, the revision courses, you can also get involved with the uh, study reserve and you can continue. All right. Okay, so this is going to be kind of a discussion that uh, I'm going to explain your doubts, I'm going to clarify your doubts, right? And meantime, I'm going to give some explanations, right? So if you all have any doubts, any queries, right? You can send a text or you can chat or, or later, even later, I'll send you my uh, contact details so you can contact me so then I can clarify your doubts. Okay, Daru, right. So kind request, Please keep your cameras on so that I can have a live discussion with you all. This is not just to your uh, record or not just you know, nothing, right? This is just for, you know, to have some enthusiasm and to, to make it live, we need to, you know, have face-to-face -face discussion. Okay, so as a kind request, please uh, keep your camera switch on, then it will be more live. Actually, I'm doing these uh, live sessions after a long, long time. So this is kind of a, a kind of a new experience to me as well. Okay. I have been doing classes so many years, but uh, this is uh, after a long gap, I'm doing this live class. Okay, after all these things, shall we move on to the topic? Okay, so today we will be discussing 25 MCQs. And then and there, I will give some uh, uh, briefing about those topics as well, okay? We will start, right? So let me share this uh, screen with the MCQs. Today we have just one second. Just give me one second. Uh, So, yeah, I hope you all can see the, uh, the paper now, right? Okay, so if you all have any, any practical issues, any, any, you know, technical issues, please let me know, then uh, we'll be able to sort them out. Right, okay. So just to begin with, we will start with this hypothetical, don't worry about the background because I'm in the quarters at the moment, so don't look at outside, just focus on the topic, right? So first question would be regarding pituitary gland. Okay, so before I go into this topic, we will uh, just brief, we will uh, recap our knowledge about hypothalamus, pituitary, 
and ovarian axis. Can all of you see this? I hope yes. Right? So you have the hypothalamus, that is the top part of this endocrine control. Hypothalamus is, is at the top. Then you have the pituitary. Pituitary, of course, you have two components. Anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary. I'm sorry about the faulty, but anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. And then you have the organ. Okay. So this is the one which regulates, which maintains this hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis. Or in other words, this is the head of the or the principal of a school. Right? You have the principal, then you have teachers, and then you have students like that. Okay. So this is the one which generate all the hormonal uh, control will be controlled and driven by the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus sends some impulses. As a result, pituitary will produce hormones. Those hormones will go and act directly on the ovary and ultimately ovary will produce important hormones for a woman that is estrogen, progesterone and testosterone, male hormones. Estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, all these hormones will be ultimately produced by the ovary, not by the hypothalamus, not by the pituitary, but they will be given the hormonal control. So what are the hormones produced by the anterior pituitary? What are the hormones produced by the anterior pituitary? You have FSH. Follicular stimulating hormone. You have LH. You have TSH. What else? You have ACTH. What else? You have prolactin. Prolactin. Those are the one, two, three, four, five. Five main hormones produced by the anterior pituitary. What are the five main hormones that are? FSH, LH, TSH, ACTH, and prolactin. These are produced by the anterior pituitary. To produce these hormones from the hypothalamus, they will be sending some hormones to stimulate these production. To stimulate FSH and LH, what is the hormone? GnRH. GnRH will be coming from the hypothalamus. Just by producing GnRH suddenly, will it lead to FSH and LH production? No. Why not? GnRH should be coming like pulses, pulses, like waves, like tsunamis. Right? If there's a continuous GnRH production, there won't be any FSH LH production. So hypothalamus will send GnRH pulses that produces FSH and LH from the pituitary. That FSH and LH will act on the ovary. Ultimate result is this. So same way that to produce TSH from the hypothalamus, you will be sending TRH, thyrotropin releasing hormone. Thyrotropin releasing hormone. That will produce TSH and that TSH will act on the thyroid. Okay, Murti. Right? Next, to produce this ACTH, there will be corticotropin releasing hormone, CRH, will be produced by the hypothalamus act on the pituitary and produce ACTH. Mangahanena Nairatta, where does this ACTH work? On the adrenals. They produce corticotrophins and all these hormones. Okay, right? So, likewise, you have hormonal control given by the hypothalamus, act on the pituitary, and pituitary produces some hormones. These hormones will act on the ovary and ultimately they produce hormones. In the body. What are the hormones produced by the posterior pituitary? Anyone, anyone? Lienage, Hetiarachi. What are the hormones that are produced by the posterior pituitary? What are the hormones produced? Huh? Resopressin? ADH? No. 
acetophen ah it secretes ah. you have produced there are some where there are yeah. those are mcqs that are actually posterior pituitary will not produce any hormones what they do those the hormones that you name ac uh, sorry uh, adh uh, this oxytocin all these hormones are produced in the hypothalamus again and they go and store just storing in the posterior pituitary and when the requirements comes they will release so remember posterior pituitary will not produce any hormones they will just doing this storage function okay there's a connection between the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary there's a direct anatomical connection so through these vessels the hormones producing here will be stored in the posterior pituitary so those are mcqs if mcq says posterior pituitary produces adh true or false false okay and something else also happens there i told you anterior pituitary produces prolactin like if i say chelic it produces prolactin for if i say chelic and all other hormones they are stimulators coming from the hypothalamus within there okay There are still there are GnRH coming, CnRH coming, TS, TRH coming. Like that, stimulators come and they stimulate anterior pituitary. What about prolactin? Oppo CPH, this is why I have the name. Right? What about prolactin? Is there a stimulator for prolactin? No stimulator. Instead, hypothalamus produces a hormone that is called dopamine. dopamine will be produced by the hypothalamus and they inhibit prolactin production these are very common mcqs you will see in each and every paper there will be problem regarding prolactin okay so prolactin you won't have girls bodhini agara right do you all have prolactin in your blood normally no very limited amount unless you are pregnant okay you have very limited amount in your blood so prolactin production is basically inhibited in your body by who by the dopamine produced by the hypothalamus by the hypothalamus it produces dopamine they inhibit prolactin production then dopamine also coming via this route from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary this route right so by some race and if you block this road if you block the connection between hypothalamus and pituitary there won't be any dopamine coming to the pituitary as a result pituitary will be stimulated and produces prolactin so to see to make it simple pituitary pituitary now all the right yes if you want to have prolactin production dopamine production should be suppressed then only you can produce prolactin there is a there is no stimulator for prolactin okay uh, sanha right there is no stimulator for prolactin only an inhibitor that is dopamine so if you give dopamine antagonist what will happen prolactin production will increase if you have a pituitary tumor blocking the hypothalamus pituitary means this axis if there is a tumor here what will happen there won't be dopamine coming to the pituitary so pituitary produces prolactin that's why when you have tumors in your brain you have milk secretions in the tv and in the news and in sirasa tv and derana my derana and everywhere you will see right piyata kiriyere kela news em da kala thinada mawa dala gihila piyata kiriyere no father is having lactation why because of the senehase no not because of the senehase that is because of he has a tumor in the brain okay so are you all clear about this uh, hypothalamus pituitary axis all right so any problem shall we move on to the patients now daruni right so pituitary gland this pituitary gland dysfunction is the primary cause for polycystic ovarian syndrome you would have heard about polycystic ovarian syndrome it's a difficult uh, different topic i'm not going to detail true or false <coughs> where do you have the problem in pcos in this spectrum lots of girls 
I can't see any boys there. Kalau ah ina dulana, dulana sadish. Yes. So true or false? That is the statement. Pituitary gland dysfunction is the primary cause for polycystic ovarian syndrome. Is it true? False. No. False. It is false. Where is the primary problem in polycystic ovarian syndrome? Ovary. Ovary itself. It's a genetic disorder. It's a genetic disorder. Autosomal dominant variant, not pure autosomal dominant. It's autosomal dominant variant. You know, autosomal dominant means if you have the, the, the disease, definitely your kids will get, but not like that autosomal dominant variant. Means some of the kids can get. That is called autosomal dominant variant. It's a ovarian over itself problem there, the over itself. Second one, pituitary gland essential for the maintenance of all early pregnancy true or false pituitary gland is essential essential for the maintenance of early pregnancy janani uh, jayamani haronda sorry yes is this true or false lakshika true or false Dinet, I'm not sure. 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 I didn't mark it. Sorry? I didn't mark it, so I'm not sure. You're not sure. Okay, right. Somebody give a try. Pituitary gland is essential for the maintenance of early pregnancy. Forget about pituitary. For the maintenance of... I've got to erase this. Okay, so we do have the endometrium. So you know in the initial part it's proliferation. It's called proliferating phase. Then you have the secretory phase. Proliferation is done by pravini estrogen. Secretion is done by progesterone. To maintain now the embryo getting embedded within the secretory endometrium. Okay. So all the nourishment for early pregnancy will be given by this endometrium, secretory endometrium. To maintain the secretory endometrium, Tarshika, what do you need? What hormone you need? What hormone you need? Progesterone. So for the maintenance of pregnancy, what is the main hormone needed? Vagisha. Progesterone. Very good. It's progesterone. Right? That is progesterone you needed. But what happens? Now in the secretory phase, that work, I'm not going to the menstrual cycle in detail. In secretory phase, you know, you have lots of progesterone is secreted. Okay? From the over, a lot of progesterone is secreted during the long year, uh, progesterone uh, secretory phase. What does happen? This progesterone will go and inhibit the pituitary where in negative feedback way and suppress LH production. When you have low progesterone, they stimulate pituitary. When you have high progesterone, they inhibit pituitary. Right? So when you have high progesterone, they inhibit pituitary. As a result, what will happen to the LH levels? LH level drops. When the LH level drops, what will happen to the Progesterone level, progesterone level also tend to drop. Okay, so when the progesterone is dropping, what will happen? You will get the menstruation, but that doesn't happen in male pregnancy. Why? This developing placenta, this developing thromboblastic tissue go into what happens? They produce a special hormone. That hormone is called HC, HCG. Human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG. HCG is similar to LH. Now you have lots of HCG. We don't need any more LH produced by the pituitary. This HCG stimulates the corpus luteum to produce continuous progesterone. So we don't need LH anymore. Right? So in early pregnancy, maintenance of early pregnancy, do you need a pituitary? No. Do you need an, do you need a hypothalamus? 
No. What do you need? HCG. From where you get the HCG? From developing placenta sakini. Are you okay? From the developing placenta, you will get HCG. If you have HCG, that is enough to maintain the pregnancy. Is that clear? So this answer is wrong. It is not essential. Hands up those who got the answer correct. Either hands up or legs up. Then Mepa legs. So is that clear? I hope yes. Pituitary gland secrete TRH. What does pituitary gland secrete? TSH. From where you get the TRH? From the hypothalamus. Yes. Secretion of prolactin increased by dopamine. Secretion of prolactin increased by dopamine. Or is it the other way wrong? It's wrong. It is suppressed by dopamine. That's why I explain all the, the basic theory part before we come to this question. Pituitary gland in severe PPH, postpartum hemorrhage, causes Sorry, severe postpartum hemorrhage causes posterior pituitary necrosis. Tarshika, Ravini, Maduka, Pamudi, Pumudi. So, what do you all think? Severe PPH causes posterior pituitary necrosis. True or false? Sumal. You will try. You will try. It's okay. True or false, Daru? Mrs. Miss K, what do you think? True or false? Mama, kada tu tere kiwa dami kada kari me then kiwa. Daru, when you take the video three, you have any video three possible? Me me video three, mama, yaar, video three, kaka, kanti dekhi video three. So you have the hypothalamus here. Okay. Me kada mene video three, pain kora, but not this video. So you have anti-pituitary, you have posterior pituitary. I told you, posterior pituitary has a connection with the hypothalamus. So anti-pituitary has only single blood supply. Meaning, anti-pituitary has only single blood supply. Whereas posterior pituitary has a dual blood supply. It gets a direct artery as well as it's coming, the blood supply is coming from the hypothalamus also. In PPH, what will happen to your blood pressure? drops. Be because of the drop in blood pressure, blood supply to the anterior pituitary will be affected more because it has a single vessel. Whereas positive pituitary, you have two vessels, double line. So in case of a severe PPH, anterior pituitary will be necrosed because of the hypoxemia. Whereas positive pituitary will be spared. When the anterior pituitary is necrosed, what is that syndrome called? She has. She has. Yes, she has. What is the syndrome? She has syndrome. It's called she has syndrome. Anterior pituitary necrosis. A guy, that's why it's called. It's always better to have two things. Spare wheel. So in a vehicle, you need to have spare wheel. In case one is damaged, you can use the other one. 400 dual simtin ek 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 you know, to pre for the pre uh, for the lung maturity, we will give steroid, dexamethasone in preterm deliveries. This is regarding that. What is the best time to give steroids, dexamethasone? What PO is? What PO is? It is recommended to give steroids from twenty-four weeks to thirty-four plus six. This is the best time to give steroid. 24 to 34 plus 6. After 24 weeks, up to 34 plus 6. Right? 
Now the guidelines keep changing. This is the NIMAS guideline, right? So you have to go up to 34 plus six days. Steroid. So if you give steroid during this time, in case of a treating preterm delivery, it has a lot of benefits. But if you give after 34, 35 weeks, which is after 35 weeks, there can be some problems. What are the problems? It can cause developmental delay. The steroids causes developmental delay. <laughs> yes or no? Developmental delay is not a job, isn't it? You know that. Developmental delay. Parliamentary and Taliunga and Venimin. Developmental delay. Right? So, does steroid causes that? Yes. Yes. So, be careful. Those days, we used to use steroid for each and every person, right? But now, it's not because now the evidence says it can cause developmental delay. Low IQ. It may cause neonatal hypoglycemia for the child, fetus. Hypoglycemia after delivery. True or false? True or false? So the normal mahatma tiko pada kata karan. True or false? Hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia means that what? Sugar low or high? Low. Usually, when you use steroids, does it increase your sugar levels or decrease your sugar levels? Increase. Which crease? Crease. So when you ask a question, you can easily give an answer. Yes, it's crease. I don't know whether it's increase or decrease. I'm asking. Steroids, usually, according to your medical knowledge, when you use steroids, what will happen to blood sugar levels? Increase. Because it increase. Yes, increase. Increase, not decrease. It increase, right? So, what happens to the baby? Hypoglycemia. Why? That is because when you give steroids to the mother, mother's blood sugar levels will go up. Hyperglycemia. So, what will happen? Mother will produce more insulin. That insulin will go to the baby also. What will happen to that insulin? That insulin will bring the baby's blood sugar down. So, after delivery, baby will be hypoglycemic. It's true. The same thing happens in diabetic mothers after delivery. Diabetic mothers, they have high blood sugar levels. So, the baby will be getting high blood sugar levels. So, baby will be producing more insulin. After delivery, there is no blood sugar coming to the baby from the mother. So, high insulin levels, low blood sugar levels, blood sugar level further drops. Hypoglycemia. And some here. This is true. Steroids are given routinely in multiple pregnancies. Twin triplets. Steroids are given routinely in multiple pregnancies. True or false? Here and do. True then and then. I feel like you all are sleepy. Shall all of us take a deep breath? Take a deep breath. Relax yourself. Think something interesting, not about ERP, and like something like your girlfriend, boyfriend, your last dating, and all this. Now back to the topic. Steroids are given routinely in multiple pregnancies, twins and triplets. True or false? True or false? It falls down. Those days when we were students, it says that if you have a twin pregnancy, usually we admit them around 32, 33 weeks and we will give steroids two doses. Now it is not given. Unless indicated, you don't give. Wrong. Steroids should not be given if the delivery is imminent within 48 hours in preterm deliveries. Have you all understood that thing? Now, when you give steroids, Darwani, Pramesh, for me, when you give uh, steroids, how long does it take to act? Roughly, Daru, any idea? When you give steroids, Sanha, Amanullah, how long it will take to act? 48 hours. Usually, it takes 48 hours to act. If you give dexamethasone now, it won't act immediately. It takes about 48 hours. So this says, now suppose patient comes at 32 weeks, like in labor-like phase, 
you give steroids it takes about 48 hours to act so the question says steroids should not be given if the delivery is imminent within 48 hours that means patient coming with kind of a preterm delivery you think this she will deliver within about six seven hours so no point of giving dexamethasone is that true because i told you dexamethasone take about 48 hours to act is there a point of giving uh, dexamethasone? Basically, no. But, you know, dexamethasone has some immediate actions as well. So, there is no harm giving dexamethasone in that kind of a scenario. We know that optimum action will be coming after 48 hours. But, there are some immediate effects also. So, better to give dexamethasone. It's wrong. Repeated doses are routinely given if the delivery doesn't take place within seven days. Now, when you give dexamethasone, how long the action lasts? How long the action lasts, Daru, when you give dexamethasone? How long the action lasts? Seven days. And so it lasts about seven days. When you give dexamethasone today, today is Wednesday. By next Wednesday, the usually the action will be weaned off. Okay. Suppose there's a patient comes at 32 weeks with suspected preterm labor. Okay. At 32 weeks, patient is coming with pains and all. You think this is preterm labor, you give dexamethasone. After several hours, patient will be pain free and the labor is not progressing. So there is no preterm labor. Now you have given dexamethasone. You discharge the patient on the following day, uh, day meaning day. Then she will be coming after 10 days. After 10 days, patient coming with another kind of a preterm delivery like scenario. Now you know you have given. Dexamethasone 7 to 10 days ago, now the action is almost not there. Will you repeat dexamethasone? Will you repeat dexamethasone? Let me open up my uh, thing. Tell me the answer. Yes. Will you, uh, will you repeat dexamethasone? No. Usually, repeated dexamethasone is not given. Steroids are not given because of the risk of this developmental delay. Okay, so please remember about those facts about dexamethasone. So the best time to give dexamethasone after 24 hours, 24 weeks, up to 34 plus 6 days. If you are giving afterwards, there's a risk of these complications. Okay, right. <clears throat> uh, So you try not this is regarding the you try not okay so you have the abdominal aorta like this then it divides into left and right common iliac arteries left and right common iliac uh, uh, common iliac arteries then it divides into external iliac and internal iliac arteries okay Internal IDM again divided into anterior division and posterior division. Posterior division will be supplied to the most important part of your body. What is the most important part of your body, Shanika? Most important vital organ in your body, gluteus maximus. So this posterior division will supply the gluteus maximus, the muscles on the back side. Whereas the anterior division will divide into several other branches and supply the pelvic structures. You have the uterus, you have the cervix, vagina. Okay, right? So, abdominal aorta, descending aorta, divides into common iliacs. Common iliac divides into external iliac and internal iliac. External iliacs will supply your legs. Whereas internal iliac divided into anterior division and posterior division, right? Anterior division divided into several other branches and which supply the pelvic structures. What are the branches of anterior division of internal iliac artery? 
What are the branches? There's a mnemonic to remember. Oranges under some eyes might fail instantly. Oranges, let me write there. These are the branches of internal eye pathway. Oranges under some eyes might fail instantly. What is this? These are the branches of anterior division of internal eye cut. These are MCQs. Oranges, obturator, under uterine artery, superior vesicle, inferior vesicle, middle rectal, pudendal, that is internal pudendal, inferior gluteal. Those are the branches of anterior division of internal ileal cartilage. What are the branches, Taro? Oranges under some eyes might feel instantly. That's how you remember. Right? Oranges means obturator. Under means ureter, uterine artery. Some means superior vesicle. Eyes mean inferior vesicle. Middle rectal. Pudendal, that is internal pudendal, inferior gluteal. Okay, so remember those things, right? That is a, oh, there's an MCQ, right? So you try an artery, process over the ureter. The ureter is like this, the uterine artery will go over that, process over the ureter, yes. Closer to the cervix, the uterine artery process over the ureter, that is true. Anastomos with the ovarian artery in the broad ligament. From where you get the ovarian artery, that word? Ovarian artery will be directly coming from the descending aorta. It's not a branch of internal iliac artery. It will be coming straight away from the abdominal aorta. So it anastomos with the uterine artery, anastomos with the uh, ovarian artery, yes, that is true. You try not to process through the deep inguinal ring. No, no. There is nothing like that. Strong. Supplies a vaginal branch. Yes. True. You try not to supply a vaginal branch. That's true. It's a branch of posterior division of internal iliac artery. Posterior division. No. It's a branch of anterior division of internal iliac artery. <laughs> So that way, when you when you study, when you study, you have to have some basic idea about the anatomy of the pelvis, arterial supply, venous drainage, and lymphatic drainage. Those are MCQs. Question number four. True or false regarding hyperemesis gravidarum? What is hyperemesis gravidarum? Hyperemesis. Hyper means Excessive. MSS means vomiting. Gravidarum means pregnancy. So, what is the definition of hyperemesis gravidarum? Excessive vomiting in early pregnancy, which disturbs day to day activities. Excessive vomiting in pregnancy, which disturbs day to day activities, is called hyperemesis gravidarum. Okay, Viruni Karuna Nayaka. Right? Right. Ketone urea is a reliable marker of severity. True or false? Ketone urea, it can be two ketones now. Is it a reliable marker of severity? Yes or no? Yes? No? I don't know. What about Magay? What's your answer? Anyone? It's true or false? Those days, not those days, means not very far away, right? So long, not long ago, about few months ago, that's how people believe. People manage hyperemesis gravidarum according to ketone bodies in the urine. If there are a lot of ketone bodies in the urine, that means it's a severe kind of hyperemesis. Now, it is not. 
ketone molybdenum is not a reliable marker of the severity of hyperemesis gravidarum false this changed actually quite recently presence of urine nitrites may indicate urinary infection now, when a patient comes with hyperemesis gravidarum, you have to check the urine because there can be urinary infection. Urinary infection can cause hyperemesis. Okay? Presence of urine nitrites indicates infection. Yes. Pediatrics, a look, look subject, pediatric. Medicine, well, you know, nitrites can. Right? Presence of urine nitrites indicates urinary infection. Yes, true. Ondensitron is the first line antiemetic. Ondensitron is a first line antiemetic. True or false? Ondensitron is a first line. Then he turned to Kogula. Then now you all came from Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine, and everywhere, Bangladesh, and Nepal, and everywhere. Right? Now the people at your home place might think that you are now doctors. Suppose there's a pregnant lady, a neighbor of your neighbor, pregnant. She's now early pregnancy and vomiting and vomiting and vomiting. She will come and ask, Ani nahi, poda kya antu mare vomiting ko tumara gaan pilaan kela? First line, what will you do? Condensetron? Domperidone. Other room? Domperidone. Okay. Um, Domperidone also not, a, not considered to be a first line drug because of extra pyramidal side effects. Uh, the maxolone, that's metacropamide, and Domperidone sometimes can cause special metacropamide, can cause extra pyramidal side effects. What about Ondansetron? Ondansetron is a safe drug actually, but rarely it can cause. Oral cleft palate, cleft lip, and all very rare because of that. It's a second line drugs. So, first line drugs are like cyclicine, uh, pyridoxine, those H1 receptor blockers, promethazine, promethazine, cyclicine, those drugs. Second line would be like condensatron, you can give uh, uh, the metoprophamide. Domperidone and all these things. Third line, ondansetron vatakari and metam, steroids. Steroids. Fourth line, or the, the ultimate one, ultimate one, may gain the mono, gain the mono, may count out monovadunna vomit karma. Can't make that, won't make that, vomit karma, deka deka ma, me me me. What, what would be the last option? She is severely dehydrated, uh, nutritionally deprived. She can't tolerate this pregnancy at all. What's the last option? Termination. 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 It's the last option. Lung coming is happening over in a hand. But in other countries like North America, they will directly come and tell you, Doctor, I don't need this. Thing, bloody sheets, like something like they use those words, right? Take these off, something like then you have to go for a termination. Right? That is the last, last option. Thiamine should be given before starting dextrose. If a patient comes with hyperemesis, will you do dextrose at once? No. Because excessive vomiting causes thiamine depletion. When you have thiamine depleted, what complications can happen? Really? Really? What kind of complications are there? Wernicke's encephalopathy. Have you all heard of? Wernicke's encephalopathy can happen really. It's kind of a uh, CNS disorder. Wernicke's encephalopathy. If you give dextrose at once for a patient who severely uh, Vomiting and CD hyperemesis gravidarum. If you give dextrose initially, it can precipitate vernix encephalopathy. So, what you have to do, Zamil, what you have to do then? You have to first give them what? Time. You have to use time in supplements and then only you can go for dextrose. So, timing should be given before starting dextrose, yes.
to prevent what janani vernix encephalopathy yes combination of antiemetics are better than monotherapy monotherapy means single agent what is best lot of drugs together antiemetics or single drug what is best if it's like this right if you want to stop vomiting sometimes you may have to combine several antiemetic agents that's true but when you give more drugs you will have more complications side effects isn't it especially for the treaters so always single agent would be better but if it is not responding of course you will have to combine several things right but you can't say that polytherapy is always better than monotherapy no strong you understood that that question ternadu any problems dilini any problem okay right so if you are need a break please let me know right okay lakshika right good go to the next one question number 5 physiological changes in pregnancy includes decreased prolactin concentration what will happen to your prolactin we talk about the prolactin initially also what will happen to your prolactin concentration in pregnancy what will happen to your prolactin concentration in pregnancy why actually do you need prolactin for a female basically for the lactation prolactin is a trigger for the milk production okay milk production ko one way to go with it i mean after delivery immediately after delivery you need the milk production so during pregnancy period you have to prepare this mother for the lactation soon after delivery so prolactin production will keep on rising throughout the pregnancy okay throughout the pregnancy prolactin concentration will rise that's why some of the pregnant mothers after about you know 20 24 weeks they have some kind of milk secretion from the breast still they are pregnant but still you can have some amount of milk production that is because of the prolactin and during the lactation period it further rises because of the other hormonal effects like estrogen even though the prolactin is high they will suppress milk production but after delivery once you take the placenta out estrogen level goes down prolactin level is high so they will start their job after the delivery vilangada peru nahi hone lag raha any problem so far physiological changes in pregnancy includes decrease tsh levels in the first trimester true false why shamila is it true or false sir tamadi is it true or false sumal is it true or false yes i'll call it false ah false false uh, why false because, because uh, due to hcg it can uh, mimic the tsh so it, uh, it can uh, you are somewhere there i'll give you a chocolate it's something like this sir so you have fsh lh tsh h cg all these hormones are glycopeptides it or ne the past is saman past it only glycopeptides right so they have two subunits actually alpha and beta all these hormones will have alpha and beta alpha beta alpha beta two subunits okay this is a common feature for all these hormones what is the common feature that all these hormones four hormones share a common alpha subunit the alpha subunit wise they are similar identical whereas how they different from sumal to dinit 
denote to third set. How do they differ by their beta subunit? By their beta subunit, they are identical, but alpha uh, by they are they are different, but by their alpha subunit, they share the common alpha subunit. So basically, these hormones look like same. They are they have similar features because of the common alpha subunit. So in pregnancy, what will happen to HCG levels? HCG levels are very high, isn't it? How the HCG hadani? Who will produce HCG? Trophoblastic developing placenta. Right? So your HCG levels are high. HCG is similar to TSH. Okay? Because they are subunits wise, they are similar to uh, TSH. HCG. So what happens? This HCG will go and act on the pituitary gland. Poor pituitary gland doesn't know whether my TSH is coming or whether my twin sister is coming, that is HCG. So HCG will have some effects on the thyroid gland. As a result, they will produce some more thyroxine, T3, T4. Okay, so HCG will act on the thyroid gland and produce some thyroxine. What will happen now? When it has more thyroxine, they will have a negative feedback effect from the pituitary and suppress TSH production. So then, what will happen to the poor TSH levels? Will go down. So when the TSH level drops down, again, thyroxine production also will go down and it will come to a normal level. So take home message. In pregnancy, early pregnancy, if you want to check for the thyroid status, especially to see whether the patient is hypo or hyperthyroid, TSA is not that reliable. You have to check the free thyroxine levels. So TSH level will be low in early pregnancy, that is true. So now you got the answer. Yes, elective. Right? So TSH level will be low in early pregnancy. Level. So decrease TSH in the first trimester, that's correct. Increase FSH levels. Increase FSH levels. True or false? Again, false. Why? Because in pregnancy, that was because of the corpus luteal production and placental production, you have a lot of estrogen and progesterone. When you have a lot of estrogen and progesterone, they negatively inhibit the pituitary suppress FSH and FSH. They will be low, strong. Increase estriol levels. Estriol levels. What are the estrogen types in your body? What are the estrogen types in your body, Dabu? E1, E2, E3. So depending on their hydroxyl groups, they have one hydroxyl group, they have two hydroxyl groups, they have three OH groups. So, estrogen one is called estron on. Estron. This is called estradiol. Diol, they got sunny diol, extra diol. This is E3, it is called estriol. Estriol. So, estron, estradiol, estriol. How to remember these things? Estron, only a kai thing. So, when you are menopause, nobody will be with you. Your husband would have passed away or left away, and your kids are also not with you. You are alone. So when you have menopause, this is the predominant hormone, estron, on, ekkenai, estradiol. When you are young and in the reproductive age, always you have a partner with you, or one or several can be, but at least one partner with you. So two people will be there, estradiol. This is the hormone when you are in the reproductive age groups. 
Out of all these three estrogen types, estradiol is the most potent, most powerful estrogen. Okay, right. So, es increase estriol levels, that is true. Increase transplacental transfer of calcium. Yes, in pregnancy, the baby is growing, baby's bones are developing, teeth is developing, teeth are developing. So, mother has to send more calcium through the placenta to the baby. Transplacental, true. Okay, clear? Take a deep breath. Take 30 seconds off. 30 seconds. Don't go out. Right, just stay there. Send a message to a girlfriend, boyfriend, like that. Or girlfriends, boyfriends. Okay, now 30 seconds, finish. Come back to the topic. Now, when it comes to the fetal circulation, Daru, right? Now, to the baby, there are umbilical veins. There are umbilical veins will bring the oxygenated blood to the fetus, to the placenta, the oxygenated uh, the blood most oxygenated blood will be coming to the feet as well. Umbilical veins. You all know veins will carry usually deoxygenated blood. But in the fetus, Prasad, go to the bonagama in the fetus, oxygenated, oxygenated blood will be coming via umbilical veins. Though. So veins will carry oxygenated blood. And they, these will be going through the liver into the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava. So in the liver, there can be some mixing of oxygenated blood with the deoxygenated blood. Okay? Okay, see so me, right? So in the liver, there can be some uh, mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So that will be prevented by, there's a shunt here that is called ductus venosus. Ductus venosus. Ductus venosus. Right? So, so what is the purpose of ductus venosus, Daru? To prevent desaturation of this oxygenated blood. That is, then they are closer to the liver. So the blood will be oxygenated, blood will be coming from the umbilical veins, though they have the highest oxygen saturation. And in the liver, there will be a shunting that is done by the ductus venosus into the inferior vena cava. So the next oxygenated blood will be in the inferior vena cava. So coming to the right atrium. Right atrium, you have now oxygenated blood. So in the in the in, the, in pregnancy, Darbo, the lungs are not functioning. All the oxygenation is done by the placenta. So the lungs are uh, not functioning at all. So, this blood will be entered into the, uh, the right atrium and most of this blood will be shunted into the left side by a symptom here that is called foramen ovale. Through the foramen ovale, Dargo, this oxygenated blood will not be sending into the lungs. This is where it goes to the lungs. So, to prevent it prevent the most of oxygenated blood going into the non-functioning lungs instead of that they will be shunted in the left side. 
that is Pramanova. However, some of the blood will be leaving into the right ventricle and through that into the lungs. And before they go into the lungs, there will be another shunt here that is called ductus arteriosus. Ductus arteriosus they will take back that blood without they going into the lungs. They divert those oxygenated blood. So ultimately oxygenated blood will become to the left atrium. From the left atrium to the left ventricle, right, to the left ventricle, to the aorta, and to the rest of the body. Okay, this is how the fetal circulation works. So you have most oxygenated blood in the umbilical veins. Then inferior vena cava. Then right atrium. Then left atrium. Then left ventricle. Then the aorta. And the deoxygenated blood will be going back to the fetus. Sorry, going back to the mother by umbilical arteries. So umbilical arteries will contain most deoxygenated, desaturated blood. Whereas umbilical veins, the most oxygenated blood. What the blood is going to be? Umbilical veins. Desaturated, dirty blood will be the umbilical arteries. Okay, clear? Right? So question. In the fetal circulation, high oxygen concentration is found in left ventricle. No. By the time we can come to left ventricle, the saturation is low. Descending aorta is further low. Wrong. Ductus arteriosus. ready, but still towards the lower side. Ductus venosus. Yes, of course. Oxygenated blood here. Umbilical vein. Yes, that is the most situated blood. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so venous side we have the highest oxygen situation in the fetus, whereas the uh, whereas 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 the arterial side will have desaturated, deoxygenated blood. Okay, Chamali Sandipani, understood? Right, go on. Question number seven. Regarding prenatal invasive testing, what is prenatal? Pre means before, calling. Natal means delivery. Postnatal means after delivery. Prenatal means before delivery. So before delivery, invasive testing. This is regarding that. Okay, to diagnose some of the chromosomal problems. This is amniocentesis, not amniocentesis, amniocentesis. Chorionic villus sampling, photosynthesis, those are the pre investigations. So you see, chorionic villus sampling is done after 11 weeks associated with fetal limb defects. What is chorionic villus sampling? Then? What is chorionic villus sampling? You insert a needle under ultrasound guidance, you insert a needle and take a biopsy from the placenta. That is done from 11 weeks onwards. If you do it before 11 weeks, there's a chance of limb defects. But after 11 weeks, the risk is very low. So this is wrong. Chorionic villus sampling has a significantly higher miscarriage rate than amniocentesis. Lakshika, true or false? Which one is safer? Is it amnio or chorio? I marked it as false. It's false. false. Very good. Yes, it's false. Very good. Because both these procedures, the, the, the miscarriage rate is about 0.5%. Choreo slightly, maybe few uh, few points, maybe more, but almost same, 0.5%. It's not significantly higher. That means if you do 200 Amniocentesis, so 200 chorionic pillar sampling, one fetus can abort. 0.5% means that. What the gun I She shot the pass near. Mokonina, who knew Elegant Kamara, Mahatta Badlogi, girls are like, you know, like this. 
boys are like feeling. Take a deep breath. Get some fresh air. Kianin after fresh blood tea. I am getting an inning on hypothyroid villa, dysmenonia, dysperonia. So be smile, right? Your exam will not be very close by, not tomorrow. Cell free DNA testing is the definitive test for fetal and diploidy. What is cell free DNA technique? So, for your nuclear sampling and amniocentesis, you have to pierce the, uh, the, the, the amniotic sac, isn't it? You have to insert a needle into the tummy. What is cell free DNA technique? Instead of that, you take a blood sample from the mother and you can purify fetal DNA from the maternal blood. Wow. You can purify baby's fetal DNA from maternal blood and you can analyze. So that is a good method compared to piercing the fetus, right? You can take a blood sample from the mother. It's not a big issue, isn't it? So, but that is not 100% sensitive. Okay, that is not 100% sensitive. So, if you want a 100% correct diagnosis, you have to go for invasive testing, that is amnio or polio. Placental mosaicism is a drawback with chorionicular sound. True or false? Maduka. True or false? True or false? Though? Okay. False. So the answer is false. Placental mosaicism is a drawback with chorionicular sound. What is mosaicism? Mosaicism. What is mosaicism? Mosaicism means that now, when you take a tissue, say for example, if you take uh, uh, muscles here, right, all the muscle cells will contain the same DNA pattern. All the cells will be contain the same DNA pattern. But when you come to placenta, there can be some cells which are different from the other cells genetically, in the sense the DNA pattern can be changed. But it's called mosaics and not same. So that is the problem with for your nucleus sound. Okay, even though you take the DNA sample, some of the cells may contain some DNA, some of the contains a normal DNA, some of the cells may contain abnormal DNA. So that is a problem. That is about 2% of cases placental mosaicism can happen. Okay, so in that sense, amniocentesis is much more reliable than for unicular sampling because of this mosaicism problem. Okay, so if you are given two options, amnio and choreo, what will you go for? Amnio would be better. It's more reliable. Okay. Uh, what's the question there? Yes. So, placenta mosaicism is a drawback in chorionicular sample. It's true. Amnio synthesis is best compared to chorionicular sample for early diagnosis. So, I gave you the answer. Amniocentesis is the best for early diagnosis compared to CVS. True or false? Again, false. Why it is false? Chorionicular sampling you can do. Can be done for chorionicular sampling can be done after 11 weeks, very early pregnancy. Whereas if you want to do amnio, you have to wait till 15 weeks. After 15 weeks only, you can do amnio. So if you want very early diagnosis, what is the best? Choreo. True that it has a 2% chance of mosaicism, but 2%, 98% will be non mosaicism Okay. So if you want an early diagnosis, want an early diagnosis, CVS would be the better. So you can't say amnio is the best compared to CVS in a diagnosis role. To be frank with you, tell me somebody who got five out of five correct for this question. Anyone? Genuinely? No. So you have to think 
properly and you have to have your theory knowledge, solid theory knowledge to answer this question. Take a thing really on name or name. Question number eight. FSH. It's a steroid hormone. True or false? Is it true or false? It's a glycopeptide. Thank you for half day. It's a glycopeptide. FSH, LH, TSH, SEG, all are glycopeptide, not steroids. False. Using the management of subfertility. Subfertility. Using the management of subfertility. Darwan, Nometi, Savin, Tanina, Ambalata, HC, TSH, sorry, FSH, then on. Why? What does FSH do? Follicular stimulating hormones. They go and act on the ovary and stimulate tiny follicles to mature. Okay? So, you need mature follicles for a pregnancy. This is the natural hormone. Yes. So, this is the same thing will be done by drugs like promethine citrate, letrozole. They also do the ovulation induction. But the natural thing is FSA. So, if somebody is not responding to the drugs like, you know, promethine citrate, letrozole, next option would be FSH. It's effective. Okay. It's true. It's true, true, true. Is not involved in male spermatogenesis. FSH is a female hormone not involving male male spermatogenesis. No. <laughs> Males also you need FSH to certain extent for the spermatogenesis. False. Has a similar beta subunit as TSH. True, no? Similar beta subunit as TSH. Me, thank you. True. False. Beta neve alpha. Similar alpha subunit. Not beta. Then didi mate gila exam ke oma gahala amu kadi kyan amma dumna ni kang atti helen na gila. Ilang daos ay na balo na tamhe theory ni atti helen na the gila. So read the question kya apuri dar. There can be one word, single even a single letter. Can change the whole answer, isn't it? This is not beta subunit that is identical, that is the alpha subunit that is identical. So, this is wrong. FSH is used to diagnose menopause. Menopause means ovaries are not functioning now, no estrogen. So, estrogen level is very low. So, as a result, negatively, what happened? The FSH and LH production will go very high. Negative feedback. Means. Okay. So FSH level will be very high in menopause. Screen. So if you want to confirm menopause, FSH is the test. True. Question number nine. Followings are correctly matched with hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis. Bulimia decreased pulsatile GnRH secretion. What is bulimia? Bulimia can be in way. What is bulimia? What is the other disorder going hand in hand with bulimia? Anorexia. anorexia. Yes, anorexia nervosa. Anorexia nervosa is the same thing. When you say bulimia, then you might think, oh my God, what is bulimia? Those are eating disorders. Eating disorders. What are eating disorders? They are like this much, but they think, oh my gosh, I'm like this. I'm too fat. This dress is not fitting to me. Something like that. So it's a psychological problem. But you also better check your psychological status, right? So in front of a mirror, they think that their image is they are too fat. They are obese. They stop eating to cut down the weight. When you go to the extreme cases, sometimes they will even stop drinking also. So in anorexia nervosa and bulimia, in both conditions, these uh, eating problems can happen. So significantly, they will lose their body weight. When you suddenly lose your body weight, okay, that within a short period of time, you are at a risk of getting 
less GnRH pulses because it directly affects your hypothalamus and pulsatile GnRH secretion will be suppressed. So you can be even amenorrheic. Software time. What's the take home message, Sachin? On the Takala Sepe in Nigerian, Bulimia gave in Nipa, and Roxia nervous are in Nipa in the Kali Kala Bila in Nigerian. Right? So this is true that <coughs> HPO axis increase FSH seen in Ashaman syndrome. What is Ashaman? What is the syndrome we discussed earlier? Anti repetitive necrosis? Shihan Naya, Shihan syndrome, Shihan syndrome. What is Ashaman syndrome done? What is Ashaman syndrome, Lakshika? What is Ashaman syndrome? Ashaman syndrome means that there's excessive fibrosis within the endometrial cavity, uterine cavity, there's fibrosis. There is no hormonal problem with the Ashaman syndrome, it's only the fibrosis in the endometrial cavity. After the procedure like BNC, ERPC, you can get fibrosis within the endometrial cavity that is called Eschermann syndrome. They will be secondary amenorrhea. So in that condition, there is no hormonal imbalance. So GNR pulses will not change. They are not menstruating because of the problem in the uterine cavity itself. So this is wrong. Hypersecretion of LH Hypersecretion, uh, in, uh, hypersecretion of LH in polycystic ovarian syndrome. Just give me one second. I'm getting called from the wall. Oh, sister. Hmm. Hmm. Um, sorry. So, hypersecretion of LH in polycystic ovaries. In polycystic ovaries, you know, what happens to their LH levels? LH levels will be very high. That is true. This is like this. In polycystic ovarian syndrome, Daru, you have increased LH and increased FSH production both. But LH level will be much higher in polycystic ovary syndrome. When it comes to menopausal state, what is the difference? Vinuri, Maduka, when it comes to the menopausal state, what happened to estrogen and uh, sorry, FSH and LH? In menopausal state, again, east, uh, sorry, FSH and LH will be high, but FSH will be very high compared to LH. So when you are asking to these patients or read patient carefully, right? If somebody says in polycystic ovarian syndrome, FSH level also high. Yes, true. But LH level will be very high. Whereas in menopausal state, LH level will be high, but FSH level will be very, very high. Okay, clear? Right. <clears throat> so, of low LH in menopause, that is wrong. Phenothiazines causes hyperprolactinemia. What are phenothiazines? People who are doing psychiatry. Phenothiazines, antipsychotics. What they do? They are dopamine agonists. Maybe antagonists. Dopamine antagonists, sorry. Phenothiazines are dopamine antagonists. So they suppress the dopamine action. When the dopamine action is suppressed, what will happen? The prolactin production will go up. True, true, true.
physiological changes in pregnancy includes increased residual volume. What is residual volume, Daru? Amount of air that is trapped inside your lungs after forceful expiration. So, Karna, when you forcefully exp uh, expelled the maximum, but still there will be some amount of air trapped inside your lungs. That is called residual volume. What will happen to residual volume in pregnancy? Anyone, anyone, anyone? Residual volume? Anyone, anyone? Residual volume? Decreased, isn't it? Residual volume decreased. The third, uh, second one, increased kidney size. Yes, almost all organs in our body, the size will be increased during pregnancy. True. Increase lower esophageal sphincter tone. Forget about lower, lower esophageal sphincter. What will happen to the pregnancy? What will happen in pregnancy? They always get regurgitation, right? Vomiting, regurgitation. Why? The lower esophageal sphincter is sphincter tone has gone away. It opens. That's why they get burning sensation always. So, what will happen to the esophageal lower esophageal sphincter tone? Reduced. What is the hormone re responsible for that thing? Both in it. What is the hormone responsible for this lower exophageal stone? Progesterone. What will happen to the gut movements? Peristaltic movements of the gut. Forget about that thing. What will happen if you become pregnant? You will be constipated. Girls, if you are constipated now, maybe pregnant. You don't know, right? So, during pregnancy, it's very common to have constipation. Why? Gut movements are reduced. That is, again, because of progesterone. So, uh, increase low waste of ages being the tone. That is wrong. Reduction in uterine and cervical collagen. Yes. Uterus increase in size. What is the size of a non-pregnant uterus? Non-pregnant uterus, yeah. What's the size there? Just 50 grams, we put tiny ambetic with 50 grams. Nobody cares. 50 grams with blood in it. But when you become pregnant, it increases up to 1000 grams. So this increase is because of the increased muscle mass as well as the collection. Decrease fat cell volume. That is hematocrit or fat cell volume. That is the, the percentage of or the concentration of red cells. What will happen to the concentration of red cells in pregnancy? Hemodilution, because of that red cell concentration drops. So what will happen to the fat cell volume? Drops. They, this question can come as hematocrit, same thing. Why camera work? Because you should know that the mother is not going to be able to do the work. Right? No, I don't think. Well, I don't think. Last time, I think. Right? Okay. All right. Go to the next one. Uh, features of impending uterine rupture. See the word. Impending uterine rupture. This uterine rupture. What is impending uterine rupture? Now, uterus is going to rupture in a, in a little, little time, it's going to rupture. It's not yet ruptured, it's about to rupture, something like that. Impending uterine rupture. What are the features? What, do you, what are the earliest signs of impending uterine rupture? CTG abnormalities. CTG abnormalities would be the earliest signs. Continuous abdominal pain. Yes, right? Now, in labor, this usually happens in labor, no, Daru? If a patient had a past cesarean section, now she, when she is in labor, that's called VBAC, right? You will get contractions and relaxations. Contractions and relaxations. Those are intermittent contractions, uh, intermittent pains. But when the uterus is about to rupture, you will get continuous abdominal pain. 
rather than the intermittency, you would get continuous pain. It's true. Fetal tachycardia is not really the tachycardia, there are fetal bradycardia in these situations. It's wrong. Fresh vaginal bleeding. Yes, you can get some little bit of fresh vaginal bleeding. Hypotension. That means low blood pressure. True or false? Madhushankar. K. Madhushankar. True or false, Daru? Hypotension. Madhuka. It's true or false? True. False. It's false. Why you get hypotension, Daru? Because of the bleeding. Massive bleeding. So, this is regarding impending uterine rupture. Uterus is not fully ruptured now. If the uterus is fully ruptured, yes, of course, bleeding inside, hypotension, tachycardia, shock. Okay? But this is regarding impending uterine. See, you know the answers. Unless you are careful enough, you can easily go wrong. Right? So, impending uterine rupture means that the uterus is not yet ruptured. It's about to rupture, Vagisha. Okay, so you won't get hypotension as such. You can get CTG abnormalities, you can get fresh vaginal bleeding, you can get fresh hematuria, hematuria because of the bladder involvement, fresh hematuria, right? Those are uh, impending features of impending uterine rupture. But once it is fully ruptured, then of course you will get hypotension, tachycardia, shock features. Absence of palpable fetal parts. Absence of palpable. Yes, Daru, this is again after fully ruptured. When the uterus is ruptured, there will be bleeding inside. Baby will be pushing into the peritoneal cavity. It's very difficult for you to locate the baby's path. This is after full born rupture, not impending rupture. See the word impending. Right? If you have any kahata, so you can let me know, right? Right, come to the next one. Regarding epilepsy in pregnancy, LSCS is indicated. That means all epileptic mothers should be delivered by cesarean section. True or false? False. False. Max sulfate is used in the management. Epilepsy, max sulfate? No. That is eclampsia. Frequency of seizures increase in pregnancy. Yes, it can. Right? Seizure frequency can increase. High dose of folic acid is indicated. Yes, you have to do 5 milligram folic acid. Lamotrigine is considered less teratogenic. No. Yes, yes, sorry. Lamotrigine is a newer anticonvulsive drug. It's quite safe during pregnancy. Yes. Less teratogenic. What is the most harmful anti epileptic? Most harmful. Yes, we know. Valprate. Sodium valprate is the most harmful. Drug. What is the most uh, safest uh, conventional anti epileptic? Avatika randomly handed. Oh, Ekatama Uttari. Carbon. Carbon is free. Right? Carbon is is the most safest drug. Conventional drug, but lamotrigine also a safe drug. Sodium valproate is the nastiest. Question number 13. Poor progression of labor in the second stage is treated with. Second stage, or is fully dilated, labor progression is poor. What you can do? Amniotomy. Membrane is still there. Will you break it? Yes, of course. Rupture the membrane. Yes, true. Augmentation with prostaglandins. Harinadar. Augmentation with prostaglandins. True, no? True, no? False. It's false. Augmentation is only for induction of flavor, not for augmentation. What is the difference between induction and augmentation? Induction means to initiate the labor, to, to, uh, to uh, start the labor, you can use prostaglandins. But once the labor is started, 
If you want to make it faster, we can't use prostaglandins, artificial prostaglandins, that is only the citosinone you can use. It's wrong. Episiotomy. You know about episiotomy, right? Now you want to, there is a living in the second stage, where this cervix is fully dilated and baby is not coming out. So what will you do? You make a cut here. You make a cut there, right? This is called episiotomy. Just give me one second, brother. Hello. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Upper line of the dynamic. Nan. Out in the oh, 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 they under the dung, they do the real, you do a large episiotomy to take the baby's head out. Will it faster your delivery? No. Episiotomy will not augment your delivery. So, what is the purpose of giving episiotomy? What is the purpose of episiotomy? The main purpose of episiotomy is to prevent a major decretia going into the rectum. Otherwise, it won't deliver the baby itself. Okay, that is the that is the and, and again in uh, short distortion also we give episiotomy. Why? To get some access and prevent 30 degree, 40 degree tears. Otherwise, it won't deliver the baby. Manual rotation of the head to do a V and rotate the baby's head. True or false? If the baby is in the occipital transverse direction, will he come out easily? No, it won't. So what you can do, one option is to put your hand and rotate the baby's head into occipital anterior position. Now occipital transverse means like this. Don't look at the gray hair, like this, right? If you turn the baby's head into occipital anterior position, yes, then you can take the baby out. It's true, it's true. Vacuum extraction, of course, yes. Vacuum faucets, true. If this is empty, emptying the bladder, true or false? When the bladder is full, Garbo, it will obstruct the birth canal. So once you empty the bladder, of course, there's enough space for the baby to come out. All right, question number 14. Following are used in the management of preeclampsia at 32 weeks of pregnancy. Preeclampsia. Diclofenac sodium suppositories. We commonly use, no? Diclofenac sodium suppositories. Yes or no? No. This is wrong. NSAIDs other than aspirin is contraindicated during pregnancy. We don't use NSAIDs. But aspirin is also an NSAID, but you can use aspirin. But other NSAIDs are not used. Because they prematurely close the ductus arteriosus in the fetus. You know the ductus arteriosus? It's important to maintain the patency of the ductus arteriosus. But if you give NSAIDs, it can prematurely uh, close the ductus arteriosus while the baby is inside. I am dexamethasone. Yes. Yes. Because if you are going to plan to deliver this baby within, you know, within one week like that, you have to take some insulin. I will have to know, yes, if the blood pressure is very high, I will have to know this. Use. Sublingual nephilipine, under the tongue, nephilipine. Oral nephilipine, yes, you use after patient to swallow nephilipine with water. What is sublingual nephilipine? What is the problem with sublingual nephilipine? 
In a theory, you would have learned that. Oh, in preeclampsia, problem is not the actual the blood pressure. This is something else. This high blood pressure is essential for the fetus to survive. So in vacuum extraction, we need to do episiotomy. So episiotomy won't uh, fasten the labor. No, that in episiotomy, in forced delivery, sorry, in forced delivery vacuum, we put a put an episiotomy again to prevent major degree tears, not to facilitate the delivery. <laughs> sorry. So, uh, we were talking about uh, preeclampsia. Yes. In preeclampsia, this high blood pressure is essential, essential to give some supply to the baby because the placental, I am not going to detail, placental vessels are high resistance to give some supply to the baby, mother increase her blood pressure. That is essential. If you drastically drop the maternal blood pressure, what will happen? Baby will not get any supply. Baby can die even. So in preeclampsia, you don't drastically drop the blood pressure, maternal blood pressure. You have to gradually reduce it. If you use sublingual negative pain, problem is it can drastically drop your blood pressure. So we won't give sublingual negative pain. If it is says just negative pain, true. Sublingual negative pain, no. Is that clear, Daruni? Yeah. COM2302121. Are the EMHD clear? Right. IV diazepam. Will you give diazepam in preeclampsia? No. That is in epilepsy. We give max sulfate. Question number 15. Presentations that are favorable for vaginal delivery tools. Presentation favorable for vaginal delivery. Brow presentation. What is the diameter in brow presentation? Brow. Mento vertical. What is the diameter? This is the largest diameter, 13.5. Mento vertical. You can't deliver vaginally. It's only by cesarean section. False. Extended breach. Extended breach. Extended breach. What is extended breach? The baby's legs are extended. Extended breach. What is face breach? Like this. Baby's legs are flexed and the hip also flexed. Right? So, out of those two, Flex breach and extended breach. What is the most uh, convenient position for vaginal delivery? This one or this one? Flex breach would be the most successful and most convenient for vaginal delivery. Not the extended. However, extended delivery is not a, not itself is not a contraindication for vaginal. Still, you can deliver. Foot limb breach? No. Foot limb breach is contraindicated. So, extended breach? Yes, true. But best thing is flex bridge. Flex bridge is yes. Main to anterior phase. What is this? Main to anterior and main to posterior. Main to means chin. Main to anterior means like this. Mento, this is anterior, this is posterior. Mento anterior means like this. What is mento posterior? Mento posterior. If the chin is for the khaki side, that is mento posterior. If the, the base is on this side, like this way, I can't show it, right? You can imagine this is mento anterior. <coughs> Which one can be delivered vaginal? Mental anterior can be delivered vaginal, whereas mental posterior you can't deliver vaginal. Why? It is already fully extended. 
because you all know in vaginal delivery last step before the last step actually is the extension of men but in menta posterior baby is already fully extended the neck so he can't do further extension so there's no time to explain all these things but remember mento anterior can be delivered vaginally mento posterior is not okay clear short presentation but you can always know that you can at that dal bhaga you know smart for up going at that dal bhaga ranjan ramanayak again can you deliver vaginal shoulder no it's wrong okay short presentation of 16 following are uh, indications for low dose aspirin in pregnancy low dose aspirin in pregnancy following are indications high parity that means when it comes to uh, uh, gravid of 5 6 like that is it indication for aspirin no high parity is not an indication for aspirin why basically you give aspirin in pregnancy mainly for two purposes actually one purpose is for the prevention of preeclampsia with those who are having high risk other thing is for the prevention of placental problems like iugr placental abruption and all that is again not a definitive indication but for the prevention of preeclampsia yeah, yes so we will see increase umbilical artery doppler resistance hands up those who say yes to hands up those who say false chamali chamali sandeepan true or false kisaru kis kisura kisura veera singh true or false sir increase have you all heard something like this it's like this you have the uterus like this fetus inside okay you have a uterine artery here you have the fetus inside and this is the umbilical artery okay so those who are having high risk of preeclampsia you can do uterine artery doppler assessment uterine artery not the umbilical artery right uterine artery doppler assessment if the uterine artery doppler is high index high resistance then you have to start aspirin in early pregnancy that is after 12 days okay this is the uterine artery not the umbilical artery i have told you during my theory sessions right umbilical artery doppler for what purpose you assess umbilical artery doppler this doppler to diagnose iugr as well as to assess the severity of iugr you use the umbilical artery doctor and there is another doctor that we use what is that middle cerebral artery doctor mca doctor where do you use mca doctor doctor two purposes they mean the for two purposes you do mca doctor okay to determine the time of delivery in severe iugr cases one for the second purpose in rh negative mothers to detect fetal anemia so please remember those things right those are just theory parts you have to by heart them so uterine artery doctor is to start aspirin and to predict future placental problems like iugr placenta preclampsia so not placenta preclampsia iugr preclampsia you do you try not to doctor in, in early pregnancy umbilical artery doctor is mainly to assess the fetal well being a huge job middle cerebral artery doctor to detect fetal anemia and to assess the uh, time of delivery so this is wrong 
if it is uterine artery, true. Previous to first trimester miscarriages, usually first trimester miscarriages, one or two miscarriages, you don't start as pre wrong. Pre existing diabetes, yes. Renal diseases, yes. What are the indications to start aspirin in pregnancy? And when will you start aspirin actually? After 12 weeks. After 12 weeks, till delivery, you have to do aspirin. If the patient is going for a cesarean section, when do you have to start? When do you have to stop aspirin? Suppose this patient is going for an elective cesarean section. Day after tomorrow, can you take the today's dose of aspirin? Yes. Those days, you have to stop aspirin few days before the surgery. But now, till the surgery date, you can continue aspirin. No need to stop in advance. These are practical problems. What are the indications to start aspirin, Daru? Pre-existing diabetes, not gestational, but pre-existing diabetes. Pass history of preeclampsia. Write down, write down. Who got it? The end, the end. Chronic hypertension. <laughs> Renal diseases. Autoimmune diseases like SLE, antiphospholipid syndrome, and those things. Those are actually definitive indications to start aspirin. What are the relative indications? Elderly mothers, by the time you are going to start the pregnancy, you might have to start aspirin after the age of 40. Elderly mothers, primary mothers, High BMI, BMI more than 35. Multiple pregnancy. Okay. IVF with donor, donor oocyte. IVF with donor oocyte. In the pregnancy period more than 10 years, that means last baby was delivered more than 10 years ago. In the pregnancy period more than 10 years, that's the indication for aspirin. The indications that I told you all initially are definitive indications. Even one indication, you can start uh, uh, the aspirin. But the indications I told you later, like elderly mothers, high BMI, primary, in the pregnancy period more than 10 years, uh, IVF with donor, those are relative indications. You need two factors to start aspirin. Okay, Lakshika. Understood or not understood? Sir, could you repeat the definite indications? Relative indications. Yes. Elderly priming, high BMI, in the pregnancy period more than 10 years. The definitive indication, the previous ones we told. Okay, we will first tell the relative indication. What are relative indications, Baruni? Elderly primary, elderly is more than 40, right? Elderly primary, more than uh, high BMI, uh, interpregnancy interval more than 10 years, IVF with donor, and uh, then, uh, then, 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 uh, what is uh, uh, IVF with donor? Uh, Oh, IBF is loaded. Those are the relative indications. What are the definitive indications? Past history of preeclampsia, chronic hypertension, pre existing diabetes, renal diseases, um, uh, autoimmune diseases like SLE, antiphospholipid syndrome. Multiple pregnancy is a relative indication. Relative. Relative. So those are the definitive indications. Okay. Family history also a relative indication. Family history of preeclampsia, relative indication.
I don't know whether you all know about this thing. There is a marker called PEPA. Pregnancy associated plasma protein A, PEPA. We have talked about this PEPA sometimes ago. Can you remember where? Where? Down syndrome screening. Can you remember PEPA? Down syndrome screening. Yes. So that's same PEPA, pregnancy associated plasma protein A. This is a marker of placental function. If the PEPA level is low, it's an indication for uh, aspirin therapy. Indication for aspirin. Relative, relative indication for aspirin therapy. Okay, clear. Shall we move on to the next? So, risk factors for fetal growth restriction. Risk factors for fetal growth restriction. Gestational diabetes mellitus. GDM. GDM and FGR. True or false? It is false. GDM usually won't cause fetal growth restriction. It's the chronic DM causes uh, growth restriction. Strong. Maternal short stature, cotodial. Is amma is a cotodial? Is it a risk factor for FGR? If the mother is short stature, right? There's a risk. There is a chance. Baby can be small, but smallness does not necessarily means fetal growth restriction. Those are two different things. Okay, small for gestational age may be constitutionally small, majority of cases, or maybe FGR. Just because the mother is small, baby will not be FGR. Baby can be small, but not be FGR. Those are two different things. I don't have actually time to explain all these things. But FGR and uh, small babies are two different things. So this is wrong. Recurrent antipartum hemorrhage. Recurrent episodes of antipartum hemorrhage. Yes, true. Threatened miscarriage. Yes, true. Threatened miscarriage means that during early pregnancy, uh, uh, during uh, early pregnancy, uh, you get some bleeding, but the pregnancy continues. Threatened miscarriage is a risk factor for preterm delivery as well as FGR babies. True. Labitalol. Beta blockers, yes, true, it can. Shall we take a deep breath? I will take only about five, six minutes. Deep breath. Shall want to break? No, no. Chubaraka get the one, eh? Right. All right, okay. Question number 18. Following complications are correctly matched with congenital infections. Congenital infections. So this, this is also infections, also a big topic in your exam. That you don't forget them because easily you can score marks, right? You will get at least one or two questions in your paper with uh, infections, congenital infections. CMV, cytomegalovirus, limb hypoplasia, small limbs with CMV. What does CME do? Cytomegalovirus. Sensory neural hearing defects and eye problems sometimes. But they won't cause these major defects like, you know, limb hypoplasia and all those things. What does typically do this? Who will do this uh, limb hypoplasia typically? Pardon, Karen, about one hour to hang, you know? Chicken pox. Very good. And Nicole, happy about you. I can't see your face, but I'm really happy. Yes, chicken pox. Daru. Chicken pox in early pregnancy can cause limb hypoplasia. Listeria, neural tube defects. No, Daru. Listeria uses causes from listeria uh, sepsis. It can cause miscarriages, stillbirths. 
but they won't cause neural tube defects. Power B19, aplastic anemia. When it should be at your fingertips now. Look at your fingertips. Whether you have listeria and power B19. What does power B19 do? Bodhini. Power B19, Daru. Yes, it suppresses your bone marrow. So when the bone marrow is suppressed, you can get aplastic anemia. Maker Tau Namaki, what is that name, Shamila? Non immune hydrops. You know, immune hydrops you will get in RH negative mothers. So these babies can get non immune hydrops. Rubella, sensory neural hearing defects. What does rubella typically do? What is the syndrome? What's triad? So the Mahatma no radical. When you go home today, so please collect your notes, right? Go through your infections. It's very important. It's easy. You can score marks, right? Rubella causes break stride. What is break stride? Eye ear defects. Defense. Ear defects. Cataract. Cardiac defects. Very good. I they can cause cataract and all eye problems, sensitive neural hearing defects, and cardiac problems. In addition, they can cause microcephaly. Those things also. Varicella cataract. No. Varicella usually causes skin scarring. Like a map. Skin is like a map. That from India, Korea, everything you can see on the skin. It's like mapping, like scarring skin. And also limb hypoplasia. Question number 19. Following drugs and their side defects are correctly mentioned. Doxycycline, discoloration of teeth and bone. Doxycycline, tetracycline. Actually, tetracycline is the one which usually causes this problem, but doxycycline also can cause. Labitolol stillbirth, possible. Nifidipine fetal bradycardia. Actually, tachycardia. Nifidipine causes reflex tachycardia. Ondan cetron, necrotizing enterocolitis. What is the antibiotic typically causes necrotizing enterocolitis? Coamoxiclave. Oh, very good. Coamoxiclave. Sodium valproate, neural tube defects. Yes, true. Regarding cervical carcinoma, can you remember about cervical carcinoma? What are the stages? Cervical carcinomas. Any carcinoma has four stages. You all know that. What is stage one? Cancer confined to the cervix. What is stage two? From the cervix, it has gone into paramentium and upper part of the vagina, but not turned to the lateral pelvic wall. What is stage three? It has gone further into the lateral pelvic wall. What do you have in the lateral pelvic wall? Ureters. So ureters will be blocked and the patient will get hydronephrosis. That is stage three. But it's stage four. Anteriorly, it can go into the bladder, posterior to the bubble, and distal metastasis. Basically, those are the four stages. What is stage one? Cancer confined to the cervix. Stage two, suppose I am the cervix. Can you see the cervix? Yes. Suppose I am the cervix. What is stage one? Cancer confined to the cervix. What is stage two? It has gone into the gone into either side of the cervix. That is called parametry. Okay? And into the vagina. What is stage three? It has gone further away into the lateral pelvic wall, where you have the ureters. What is stage four? Bladder, bowel, distance pain. Other than Randidaganda, bladder, bowel. Distance pain, stage four, mother
Right? Stage one, what is stage one? Charmaline, charmaline. What is stage one? Cancer confined to the cervix. You can subdivide as stage one as 1A, 1B. What is 1A? Only microscopic lesion. With your naked eye, you can't see the lesion. It's only with colposcopy. State 1A. State 1B means that on the survey, you can see a lesion also. State 1B. Okay? So please remember about the cervical carcinoma because definitely you will get a question in cervical carcinoma. So this is regarding, sorry, regarding cervical carcinoma, early invasive disease is treated with thorn biopsy. Early invasive disease means stage 1A, microscopic lesion. You can treat with thorn biopsy. You can cut the thorn like this and take the transitional thorn outside. Thorn webs, yes, this is curative. Diagnostic as well as curative. Hematogenous spread is rare. That means spread by the bloodstream is rare. True or false? Yes. What is the main mode of transmission in cervical cancer? Lymphatics. Lymphatics. And local. Local spread as well as lymphatic spread. Herpes simplex viral DNA found in majority. Herpes simplex? Do we talk about herpes simplex in cervical cancers? No. What is HPV? Subtypes monarchical among the Hanera, the metal subtypes. 16, 18, 31, 33, 35. Like the mainly 1680. Squamous cell carcinoma has a better prognosis than adenocarcinoma. What is the commonest type? Is it the squamous or the adeno? Squamous is the commonest. Okay. What will have the better prognosis? Squamous. Yes, true. Compared to adeno. Okay. What is the second commonest cancer among women? Second commonest, survival. So, what is the first commonest? Commonest one? Breast. If your question asks, what is the commonest gynecological cancer? What is it? Survival. Commonest, see the patient care with the room. Commonest gynecological cancer is this, survival. This is the common, second commonest cancer among women. Understood. Okay, good. What was the question? Yes. Surgical pathological staging is the primary method of staging. Surgical pathology. Surgical pathology. That means that you stage the disease while you are operating. And with the histology report. No. In cervical cancers, we stage the disease in advance. It's a clinical staging system. You do examination under anesthesia, and you can, uh, most of the time, you can detect the stage. Okay. This is a clinical staging. Surgical pathological staging is mainly used in ovarian cancer. Okay. I have in my uh, theory notes, I have given a uh, table. Within that table, these things have been included. Please go through them. Long time ago, right? When we were Montessori students, like, right? So just go through them and you can revise your theory knowledge. Question number 21. Regarding lyomyoma. How the lyomyoma? Alipagidraki? No. Who's lyomyoma? Fibroids. This is regarding fibroids. Increase the risk of preterm labor. Yeah, slightly, slightly, it can increase the risk of preterm labor. So, increase the risk of malignancy. This is a controversial point, actually, right? Fibroids are considered to be benign tumors. Most common benign tumors in women, right? Fibroids, right? 
extremely rare cases you can find sometimes there are some malignant changes but as mcq increase the risk of malignancy this is false multiparity is a risk factor yes yes regress with ethinyl estradiol fibroids are estrogen driven tumors so when you have more estrogen they grow so ethinyl estrogen estradiol is a estrogen right so when you have estrogen it will grow further it won't regress that's why after menopause most of the fibroids shrink because there is no estrogen undergo cystic degeneration following menopause yes because of the lack of estrogen red degeneration happens in pregnancy it is very painful cystic degeneration occurs in menopause women usually it's not that painful question number 22 regarding hysterosalpingography what is hysterosalpingography or hysterosalpingogram this is a test to assess the tubal patency what will you do you inject a radio opaque dye to the cervix and the dye will go like this fill the cavity and coming out from either end of the uh, tube if they are painted so afterwards you take an x-ray okay the x-ray will be like this There will be free spillage from my thing. Make a minimum of the kind of this is the HST field. That means they are getting anything, you know. So this is HST field. Okay. Right. This is a tubal patency test. So right. Regarding HST, endometriosis is a contraindication. No. No. Can identify by conway trippers? Yes, true. In by conway trippers, who will see the HST in my case? There's a septum here. Okay. Perform during luteal phase. You know, proliferative phase, luteal phase. When will you do all these tubal assessment tests, laparoscopy and dye test and HSG, hypocy, all these tests are done during initial part of menstrual cycle. Proliferative phase, not the luteal phase. Wrong. Prophylactic, prophylactic antibiotics are indicated, not always. Unless you suspect some infection only, you give antibiotics, otherwise no need of antibiotics. Tube ovarian abscess is a complication. Yes. Unless you are careful enough, when you inject the dye from here, the organisms here can go in and they can cause abscess in the ovaries. True. Because of that, in suspected PID patients, you don't do HST. Three more questions. Hang on. Only five more minutes. Take a deep breath. Okay, right. Are you all okay? Are you all alive? But the guinea I think on the wedding, that should touch in. Right, okay. Question number 23. That regarding contraceptive implants. Irregular bleeding is the commonest cause for discontinuation. What are the contracep uh, contraceptive implants that like Jadel, common is Jadel, implant on Jadel. Okay, what is their problem? They are progesterone separating, progesterone releasing devices. Okay, so what happens? When you are having these implants, you have more progesterone in your body, less estrogen. So what happens? 
So you don't need these pattern to build up the endometrium. Now, endometrial proliferation occurs because of the estrogen. What, what, what happened with these implants? You have less estrogen. So this endometrium is not strong enough, not stable enough. Because we have more progesterone, but less estrogen. What happened? So endometrium will not develop properly. Halfway, it will break and causes bleeding time to time. Because it's not a stable endometrium because of lack of estrogen. This is called what? Breakthrough bleeding. Breakthrough bleeding because of estrogen. This is because of lack of estrogen. The patient will have intermittent, irregular kind of, not heavy bleeding, but minor bleeding time to time. So this is the commonest reason for discontinuation. True. Are less effective than infrared devices. Actually, this Jadel is the most effective contraceptive method. It's even effective than LR. Chadel, remember. Then we will add Jadel and Dagan. But you can think later, right? Jadel is the most effective contraceptive method, if you want. Less failure rates in adolescence when compared to combined oral contraceptive pills. What is the problem with combined oral contraceptive pills, though? Compliance. That means you have to ask a lot of people to ask a lot of people to ask So easily you can miss pills and fail. But once you insert, insert this gadget, it will be there, it will do their job properly. So you have less failures with implants than combined oral contraceptive pills. This is true. Increase the risk of ectopic pregnancy. Implants increase the risk of ectopic pregnancy. Because anyway, they will prevent pregnancy. Ectopic pain, not pregnant pain anyway. So ectopic risk also going down. But uh, if you use progesterone only pills, POP, it's not available in Sri Lanka. Progesterone only pills slightly increase the risk of ectopic. But Padel won't. Can be safely inserted immediate postpartum. Chadil can be safely inserted immediate postpartum. What are the immediate postpartum contraceptives? Are you CD? Papa, are you CD? Yes or no? Yes. Jadel? Yes. DMP? Yes. Combined oral contraceptive pills? No. Why not? Because of the estrogen. It suppresses the milk production as well as increases the risk of DVD. Question number 24. Risk factors for vaginal candidiasis are ah, risk factors for vaginal candidiasis. Broad spectrum antibiotics. Yes. If you give broad spectrum antibiotics, you will knock off all the important commensal bacteria. When the commensal bacteria are not there, pathogenic. Uh, fungus like this can grow. It's true. Diabetes mellitus, yes, because of the loss, loss of immunity. DMPA, no. DMPA won't. Steroid use, yes. Combined oral contraceptive phase, it's doubtful, but some of the studies say it slightly increases the risk. Slightly. So, as MCQ, you can consider as true. But DMPA is not. Actually, DMPA is protective. Antimala sticker. So last one, C. Drugs that are that can be used to treat vasomotor symptoms in menopausal women with intact uterus. Okay. Bisphosphonates. In surgery, probably you would have heard about this drug. Bisphosphonate. Where do you use bisphosphonate? Osteoporosis. For the osteoporosis. Wow. Osteoporosis. Yes, to prevention of or the prevention of osteoporosis is an osteoplastic inhibitor, isn't it? Right? So for the prevention of osteoporosis, you use bisphosphonate. 
but this is regarding hot flushes. In hot flushes, there is no role uh, for bisphosphonate. It's wrong. Clonidine. But I'll tell you some uh, important thing about this HRT. Okay, what is HRT actually hormone replacement therapy? What is the hormone you are lacking actually in your menopause? Estrogen. So why do you get all these symptoms in postmenopausal women like hot flashes, dry skin, loss of libido and everything because of lack of estrogen? So what you have replaced is estrogen. Okay, so in a menopause woman, menopause women, what you have replaced is estrogen. But can you give estrogen alone? No, why not? When you give estrogen, this resting endometrium also will start proliferating now because of it. Oh, but after estrogen, I'm going to give up. Endometrium, because the endometrium also start the proliferation. So endometrium will start proliferating because of estrogen. It proliferate, 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 proliferate. And one after one step, it will go into hypoplasia. If you further give estrogen, it will go into endometrial cancer. Okay, so in these women, if they have intact uterus, you can't give estrogen alone because of the risk of endometrial cancer. So then what you have to do? To control the estrogen action, what you have to do? You have to give some other hormone. What is that? Estrogen may mildly cow them. You can give progesterone as well with the estrogen. Estrogen may look up and put my progesterone. So you give progesterone with the estrogen. So, progesterone will stop unnecessary proliferation of the endometrium. So, if somebody is having, a, having an intact uterus, you have to go estrogen and progesterone combined proliferation. Okay? Combined proliferation. You can do continuously the whole month, same dose. So, they won't have menstruation. But they won't have uh, menopausal symptoms. Also, they will be symptoms free. You will be sent for this on same dose, whole day, all month. So, same dose. So, they won't have menstruation, but they don't have uh, this problem also. That is called continuous combined HRT. Some women, even at all days, they won't have menstruation. But still, they won't have menstruation. So, you can, what you can do is, Com intermittent combined HRT. You give estrogen for this one to some days, some, uh, some day, and some days you give a lab. So during that uh, gap, patient will have the continuous combined HRT, or you can do intermittent combined HRT. Whatever it is, should be estrogen and progesterone combination. Okay. Suppose patient is not having a uterus, it was taken now before. No uterus. Now what you have to do? You have to use estrogen alone. You don't have to combine with progesterone. Because almost all the side effects of this HRT is because of progesterone, not because of estrogen. So if the uterus is not there, best thing is in estrogen only preparations. Okay, this is about HRT. And some people don't like take hormonal preparation. Oh, there are some medical conditions where hormonal preparation cannot be given. For that kind of people, we have other options like SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. In which conditions you will give these drugs? Depression, psychiatric conditions. So, what does it mean to you all indirectly? As a chart, SSR. What are the SSRI drugs? Fluoxetine, peroxetine, uh, oil, kind of SSRI drugs you can give. Okay? And some other drugs like chronidine. Chronidine also can be given. 
This is an antihypertensive, but still can be given in the parcel. So we'll see the patient. So before I finish this uh, uh, session today, so I will try to do some more sessions like this, right? With you all, and I think will be important for your exam. And if you all have any any uh, uh, any any feedback, please leave a feedback at the end, since um, I can improve myself or even I can stop it. If you think that this is bullshit, this is just wasting of our time, then of course I can stop it today, sir. Right? So uh, actually, I was not involved with the active learning teaching. Uh, actually, uh, active teaching over last few years. Now I'm going to really start again, right? So I'm going to revise the notes and revise the questions, and we will be having discussions like this, right? All right, okay. So we got the last question. Drugs that are used to treat worse motor symptoms in menopause have been with intact uterus. Intact uterus. Bisphosphonates, false. Clonidine, yes. Chibolon, what is chibolon? So when you take tibolon in the body, it divides it, it turn out into estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone as well. Sexual drive she will be like like sunny deal, right? Okay, so uh is that kind of drug, it has some testosterone also in it. So testosterone is important to increase the libido. There was a question that uh, there was a question last time about condoms. So we I can't remember the patient, but if we have a patient, I can discuss, right? Um so tibolone is something like that, right? Especially in other countries, like they are main now in other countries after the first or the second child, they stop the business, women. But then Lama, you know, it does not look your lama look me. Something like that, you know, they have the actual sexual, they don't think about their sexual life. And one thing is, when, you, when they go older, their testosterone level also going down. But in other countries, they are very active even at the age of 70, 80 years. They still want to be active. You know what I mean by being active. Okay, so they take this tibolon. Tibolon has some uh, uh, testosterone effects. So it increases your libido. Estradiol alone. Estradiol alone. Can you give estrogen alone when you have intact uterus? No, wrong. Venlafaxine. Venlafaxine also uh, kind of uh, non hormonal uh, HRT. Not the HRT. Not a hormonal drug that can be used to elevate the symptoms of menopause. Okay. All right. I think we have discussed um, 25 all patients and CQs, but rather than these 25 patients, I have discussed in and around about the topics. Like, for example, HBO axis, we discuss things in and around the, the topic as well. I, I thought that, I think that I have covered uh, most of the areas, right? So next paper mainly would be on um, SBS, SBA focused, right? Uh, we'll try to do, uh, and I'll let you all inform through the uh, this uh, study reserve, and so you can get enrolled in that, right? It doesn't matter whether you come to my classes or you, you're going somewhere else, right? So try to attend these classes and try to gain something from me as well, right? Um, all right, so if you all have any questions, please leave me a message or you can even call me, right? Uh, I, I can give you my number also, it's 70 right? Uh, so you can leave a message, uh, you can talk with me and you can clarify your doubts, right? And you are welcome at any time. Uh, and also, uh, please leave a comment or a feedback uh, if you think that this class need to continue in future also, right?
And thank you so much for joining today and uh, being live during these two hours. Thank you so much. It will meet up soon. If you have any patients, you can ask him, right? Okay, no problem.